on 1116 SEN Sports Overdrive. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's And welcome to Super Women Live on this Sunday night, the 27th day of May for 2012. 9429 if you'd like to get involved. Of course, Super Women Live is the official show of the Melbourne Vixens and Netball Victoria. And this week's edition is proudly presented by the Melbourne Vixens premier partner, Jason Betting, helping the Melbourne Vixens rest and recover. Unfortunately, the Vixens season hit a little bit of a snag over the last couple of weeks, but they've set themselves up still with those six early victories. They sit in third position at the moment, plenty of time to steady the ship before the run into the finals. Joining us has been one of the stars of the Melbourne Vixens this season. Karen Howarth made her debut back in round one in a match winning performance against the Queensland Firebirds. Karen, thank you uh, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, reflecting back on that debut before we get into um, today's match and some of the recent results, uh, must have been a fantastic experience to come on when the side was in a little bit of trouble and spearhead them to uh, what was a tremendous victory against, at that stage, a side that hadn't lost a game for about 18 months. Yeah, um, definitely daunting coming on um, <laughs> for my first debut um, in such a competitive game and being unfortunately down, um, but I think if that set the standard or that level, then um, we definitely had you know, that behind us to go forward and win the next five games and whilst you said <laughs> we haven't done so well the last three but hopefully we can pick up from there and I guess the there's obviously been a lot of moments out the course of the season but then next time you played Queensland you shot the winning goal with three seconds to go to, to win the game so is that for you at this stage the, the pinnacle moment of the season is it still the first game or was it that clutch goal the winning goal in that in that big match I think every match you have your own little bit of a highlight mm -hmm. um, I think I might match up quite well against the Firebirds <laughs> I've kind of put it down to that um, I don't want to say it's the pinnacle um, you know play I've mm -hmm. had so far because I'd like to think yep. that you know in the future games that potentially I'll have <laughs> you know something that will top that but for now it's definitely been um, a highlight but I would have to put it down to the first game. Whilst we're on a roll with that, obviously you're a much-travelled player, and we'll get to that in a moment, but you were on Queensland's list. Uh, have you attributed that in any way? A lot of the girls that are playing for Queensland now there at the time, was it a case of you've obviously trained with them a lot and know a lot of the secrets? I mean, you've, you've played two really strong games against Queensland. Obviously, you've been good the whole way through, but those were two really solid performances. Yeah, so obviously I was in the Queensland Firebirds team um, at the age of 18. Mm -hmm. A lot of the girls that are in there now, I've obviously gone through the ranks with okay. or um, they're actually at the AIS with me. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few girls that were there um, when I was there. So, um, But coming through the ranks with the Laura Geitz mm -hmm. um, and the Amy Steele and, you know, girls like that, um, Kira Tromph, you know, you kind of get a feel of how they play yep. and I guess that's kind of to my advantage whereas um, me not playing goal attack typically it just gives me the opportunity for me to be new and them not know my position so um. now uh, 0433981116 if you'd like to pose a question to Karen up for grabs of course we do have five double passes the Vixens were on, a, on the road a lot in the early part of the season which means that there is plenty of home games to come and one of those is this weekend. They'll take on the Adelaide Thunderbirds. It's on Sunday, uh, June 3rd, 2.20pm start at High Sense Arena. So five double passes to give away to that one. Like we do every week, uh, the best questions will be uh, given to Karen, a 0433981116. But we'll also kick things off with a, uh, with a trivia question first and foremost. So the first person in off the SMS who answers this one correctly is also victorious. Going back to the 2008-2009 season when the Melbourne Vixens won the Premiership, uh, it's a very simple one for those that are Melbourne Vixens fans. 0433981116. Who did they beat in the grand final of that season? So uh, SMS that through to us. 0433981116. Who did the Melbourne Vixens beat when they won their premiership in the 2008-2009 season? And the first answer through wins themselves a double pass. So shoot those through to us now. 
Reflecting on the Swifts game, uh, unfortunately, second time in three weeks. Uh, they're in red-hot form. They've won six in a row. What's the, the feeling like afterwards? Is it a case of, obviously, you're in a bit of a downturn of form and you've hit them when they're flying? Or is it something where you look at three losses in a row and you can pinpoint something in particular that's, uh, that's going wrong at the moment? Um, that was, it was a hard game today. There's no doubt about that. I think the positive in the last three games for us is that we've lost the games. Mm -hmm. Um, they haven't necessarily won it. Um, there was critical errors and mistakes made by every one of those players, Mm -hmm. um, including myself on court today. Um, and they're definitely errors that we need to fix. Um, obviously the feeling in the change room, like you said, is down. Uh, There's, I don't know too many teams that are too happy when they've lost, (laughs) so... Um, but, you know, I think we're just going to change it up this week at training and hopefully, you know, we can find the winning formula and we'll get back on a track. But um, I think the Swifts are definitely on a high at the moment and, you know, they, they've won the last five games. So, um, yeah, I think they're making their fast track. They are. We had three SMSs in a row get it wrong and say the Swifts, but we do have the correct answer, and it was the Adelaide Thunderbirds. So the uh, SMS are... Uh, number ending in 896, you were the first to get that one right. So you can give us a call, number ending in 896, and you can head along to watch the Vixens take on the Adelaide Thunderbirds again this week. Of course, so the Swifts had won the flag the year before, Adelaide won the flag the year after, but Adelaide lost to the Melbourne Vixens in that particular grand final. So congratulations, give us a call. Um, a couple of people have asked this question a lot and haven't had the chance really to put it forward because the Vixens were winning a lot of games. What's Julie Hornweg like uh, post-loss? Is she one that's very calm and points out the things that have gone wrong? Can she occasionally rant and rave? Is she someone who will be forceful when she needs to be? What's her, uh, her I guess, modus operandi when things perhaps go awry? I think it really depends on uh, how the game was played. Mm-hmm. If we play a game and we've lost it and as a team... We've lost it like today. Mm-hmm. Um, she tends to, you know, I think she just gets a little bit emotionally upset because she has such belief in us yeah. girls to do it. Um, I wouldn't say that she's a big yeller, but she does like to obviously point out where we could do better um, and just highlight where we did go wrong. But, yeah, so I wouldn't say she yells, <laughs> but she was definitely disappointed today in us and I think... Obviously, all the girls were disappointed in ourselves. So. Good chance taking on Adelaide next week. When you met them earlier in the season, it was in Adelaide, and you won by 14 goals, so beat them on their territory in what was probably, looking at it from a, from a fan's point of view, your, your most complete performance in terms of start to finish, total control of the game. Do you get confidence out of that now, knowing that you, you come up against a side that your, your most recent memory of playing would be a, a positive one? I'd definitely say that, that game against the Thunderbirds was mm. definitely the best game that we have played this season. We mm-hmm. had a great start and I don't think there was too many errors. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we match up quite well with them. And, um, of course, it gives you a bit of confidence going into the game, but we know it's going to be tough. They don't, you know, we're fighting for the top four positions and we're sitting on the same score as them. So we're out to win. Absolutely. Zero four double three nine eight eleven sixteen. If you'd like to pose a question to Karen, we've got another uh, another trivia question coming up very shortly. Now, looking at it from a personal point of view, this has obviously been the hot topic of, of netball over the course of the week, and we did touch on it last week, obviously with the chairlift manoeuvre. Speaking to a couple of defenders, are obviously big fans. Unfortunately, you were uh, you and Tegan were the the victims, for want of another phrase, of this particular tactic. What are your thoughts on its place in the game? Some have questioned whether it should be legal. Uh, we saw, I was watching the West Coast Fever play the Queensland Firebirds today and they actually tried it, the West Coast Fever. It didn't quite work. Uh, Susan Furman was the defender in that instance and couldn't quite get it to work. But is it something that you feel is or has a place in the game? Or I mean, it's, it's, it's extremely difficult to execute, so you're probably not going to see it a lot. But what are your thoughts on the chairlift manoeuvre? I think as my mum likes to put it is that um, I've become famous for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm kind of being splashed around uh, the image of me being rejected a few times. <laughs> um, my thoughts on it is that obviously it's a very smart play um, to come up with a manoeuvre that's in the rules and is quite effective. You know, that they pulled it on us four times and four times it came off effective. So uh, good on them. I don't know how long, obviously, it will last um teams are a little bit more aware of it now and they're already coming up with strategies on how to beat it but 
um, being obviously on the other end of it, it's <laughs> you don't actually notice it's getting set up in front of you until mm -hmm. you're kind of projected. Yeah. So, but yeah, good on them. <laughs> I'll, give them <laughs> I'll give them credit. <laughs> Would you ever consider an attacking type chairlift where uh, the, the, the attacking players lift each other up and basically not dunk because you can't touch the ring, <laughs> but drop it down over the top of it and, and make it turn the tables on defenders in that way? I'd like to think that would be able to do it, but the problem is being the bigger girl, I'd probably have to pick one of the other girls up, and I'm, I don't think I'd probably be strong enough. So. Uh, off the SMS, uh, number ending in 985, you can give us a call as well. Uh, what is Eloise Southby Helbish like as a coach? She was such a passionate player who could really fire up the team. Does she carry this into her coaching as well? Yeah, she's she's a very, very passionate coach, and she's she's constantly telling us girls, you know, that... Um, you have to protect the other players and, you know, you need to have that fire and get out there and show me that inspiration. And so she, she's a very, very passionate um, coach and she, but at the same time, I sort of look at her as a mentor. Um, mm -hmm. She constantly is telling me that I remind of her, um, myself of her. So, um but, yeah, she's she's a great coach and we're very, very lucky to have her on board this year. Must be a huge rap to hear that from, from someone with her standing in the game as oh, well. Absolutely. I, I'm more than happy to <laughs> take that one. Now, um, a lot of, lot's spoken about the importance of partnerships in, in netball. Obviously, you've been able to step in straight away and have an impact alongside either Tegan Corwell or Kate Beveridge. Uh, obviously, through that comes well, that's lengthy trainings involved in that as well. But uh, you seem to have been able to find a, a rhythm with either of those players, depending on which ones are on the court at any given point in time. I think the good part about playing with Kate is that she understands that I am not too familiar with the goal attack position. So mm -hmm. when I'm out there, she will do a lot of the work to ensure that <laughs> you know I can focus on doing the defence and the attacking work in the centre third rather than so much in the goal third. Yep. Um, with Tegan, she's just so fast that she does the majority of the running, so it means that I can play my natural position in the shooter. So somehow we've managed to make it work, and I think that's just by realising other people's strengths um, and also, obviously, their weaknesses and making sure that we don't um, keep that one open for the defenders. Now, a few more in terms of your pathway as well. Uh, obviously, played netball in Darwin and represented Northern Territory under 17s, 19s and 21. What's the pathways like in Darwin? Because we know they don't, the Northern Territory doesn't have, say, a rep side in the ANZ Championship. What's it like, I guess, in terms of participation and the opportunities available? Obviously, it's been able to lead you through to the AIS and Queensland and the Vixens and, and this sort of pathway. But how does it work, I guess, in, in Darwin? And how does that compare with what you might have seen coming up through playing in Queensland and Melbourne? Um, definitely, obviously, being in Queensland and Melbourne, there's so many opportunities and so many pathways to develop your netball. Um, growing up in the Northern Territory you don't really have those structures in place. So it means that you're in an institute of sport and you're constantly practising your netball, but the only real competitions you have are the 17s, the 19s, the 21s, nationals. Um, lucky enough that obviously they did develop the ANL comp, so Northern Territory has been able to have a, um, obviously a team in that comp. But um, it's very, very hard being a player in the Northern Territory and trying to be... Um, you know, seen by selectors just for the mere fact that a lot of the time the selectors are looking at those higher teams such as Victoria or Queensland and New South Wales and the quality players that they have. And being from the Northern Territory and a bit of a weaker team, mm -hmm. it's very hard to kind of, you know, be able to outshine those stronger girls. Now, a couple of SMSs here. Karen, how much did playing in the ANL competition help you get noticed by ANZ Championship teams? And do you think it would be a good idea to increase the ANZ squads to 16 players like the old Commonwealth Bank Trophy days? Uh, yeah, I think, obviously, having a bigger squad means that any injuries or anything, there's always a substitute mm -hmm. player. It is quite um, tough, obviously, with 12 girls already. Yep. Sometimes you don't... Obviously, there's five girls on the bench, so mm -hmm. they don't necessarily touch court um, in any particular game. So I think if you had a larger squad, it may be a little bit more harder to ensure that every girl is getting the amount of court time or the experience that they need. Um, in regards to playing a and L, I believe that that was great for me just for the mere fact that I'm predominantly a goal shooter and I've never played mm -hmm. goal attack. So playing for Fury for the last three years has given me that opportunity to sort of get that experience of goal attack under my belt. And whilst I still have a fair way to go 
in regards to sort of learning the structures of the game, it sort of gave me a bit of a step into the Vixens because not only as I, if I'm seen as a goal shooter, but I'm also seen as a goal attack now. Now, uh, if you're listening closely, Karen's given the answer there, so hopefully you were paying attention. Now, the, the second of our trivia questions is, what is the name of Victoria's side in that particular competition? Now, she has given that away. If you can get that one right, zero four double three ninety eight eleven sixteen in the ANL. What is the name of the Victorian side? Obviously, we know the the Melbourne Vixens in the ANZ Championship. What is Victoria's side known as in the uh, in the ANL? The second tier development competition coming through zero four double three ninety eight eleven sixteen. The first correct answer wins a double pass as well. Now, in a moment, we'll go through our uh, usual introductory questions as well, but a couple of others. Uh, you're one of seven girls in the family, so that's enough for your own netball side. Uh, any other netball stars amongst the ranks? <laughs> uh, when I was growing up, one of my older sisters was a netballer. She was actually a defender, so it became quite handy in the backyard. I'd mm-hmm. put up the shots and she'd defend me. But um, no, she didn't continue it on. I tend to – well, I obviously got the height in my family um, – there's no one else over six foot, so <laughs> I don't know how that one happened. <laughs> so I must have taken all the height. But um, no, no other netballers, just me. Well, my, my brother's got red hair, and I've no idea where that came from. It's nowhere <laughs> else in my family. We had a dead heat on the answer. It was the Fury straight away. So two people have got that number ending in six three five anonymous. Give us a call, and also Denise number ending five six three. You both lock that one in at exactly the same time. So. Uh, Give us a call and you can both head along to that one as well. Uh, That's the Adelaide Thunderbirds uh, this weekend, so you want to double pass to that one. 2.20 at High Sense Arena. Now, uh, one other one here, as we said, you're you're much travelled having played in Queensland and Darwin, obviously with the AIS as well, and with Melbourne. They call Melbourne the sporting mecca. Have you found it to be that way? Has it been an eye-opener how intense it is here in Melbourne? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty much that answer. (laughs) No, um... Melbournians certainly love their sport. Um, being from the Northern Territory, we mm-hmm. tend to follow rugby. Um, come to Melbourne and you follow everything, but they certainly love their footy here. So. Well, that gets, us, gets me on to the first of our introductory <laughs> questions. Uh, have you spent enough time in Melbourne to have adopted an AFL team? Um, I don't really have time to support an <laughs> AFL team, but... Uh, my state league team is Monash, okay. and um, our president is works with the Carlton Football Club. Okay. So I think if I don't say Carlton, I might be in a bit of trouble. So another of the blue baggers. There's a few of them Which going on as well. well. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, just touching on life outside of, of netball, what does that entail exactly for you at the moment? Uh, I full-time work. Yep. So I'm one of the three girls that have full-time work. Okay. Um, I'm recently married, mm-hmm. so congratulations! <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so that pretty much is my life. Okay. I go to work, mm-hmm. um, so my morning tends to start at 5.30 in the morning, go to work from 7 to 3, then go to training and back home to hubby who cooks me beautiful dinner and does all the housework. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, <laughs> on obviously having all of those busy commitments, I know she had knee surgery in the pre-season. How much of a setback was that? Is that something you still have to manage now or was that just something that was taken care of then and now you're 100%? Yeah, so I just had a arthroscope on my yep. knee. I had a bit of cartilage floating in there from the season before. Um, we had quite an extensive rehab period, but I was lucky enough that when I got it done in November that I was back before pre-season training had sort of commenced. So whilst every now and then it will flare up in regards to just being a bit inflamed, yep. it's not actually structurally too bad. Um, we manage it, but in regards to loads and stuff, I'm on a full training load. So yeah. And uh, this one we also ask, if you had the chance to trade netball skills for any other sport, is there another sport you would would, would have loved to have played at the elite level had you have had the opportunity? I'd like to say swimming, but I don't think I could get up early <laughs> enough. <laughs> I think I struggle getting up at 5.30. 5.30 is a, a good start. Yeah, so. yeah, but they get up really early, <laughs> so I don't think I could do that. Um, I think I'd probably have to go basketball because the okay. amount of people that ask me if I play basketball due to my height, <laughs> um, I would like to just be able to turn around one day and go, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> Maybe you can, anyway. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, Favourite movie? Oh, I don't really have a favourite movie. Okay. Yeah, I like anything that has a good laugh in it. Right. I'll like, yeah. Right. I don't like any really serious... Co- comedy thing. genre. Do you watch much television? Any favourite TV shows or anything? Even um, an old one that you used to like, <laughs> like Seinfeld or something? Um, 
I used to love The Biggest Loser. Okay. I used to love eating chocolate while I watched it, <laughs> so I don't know how that good that is. Is that the, the, the weakness food as well for you? Is it chocolate or...? Uh, out of treats, chocolate mm-hmm. or passion fruit cheesecake. Okay. Um, but my favourite food would have to be seafood. Favourite uh, singer or band? Pink. Okay, yep. easy. <laughs> and um, funniest teammates? Oh, um, Julie Corletto or Jeeva Mentor. Okay. Defenders are pretty funny. <laughs> I'll have to chuck B in there as well now. And um, your toughest opponent at ANZ Championship level so far this season? Oh. <sighs> <laughs> um, I'd have to say Sonia McLean for okay. now, just because she's got an incredible reach, yep. um, which is quite hard to shoot over. But I probably should chuck in Harrison in there just because I got rejected twice. <laughs> so. The most yeah. famous uh, opponent, I think, at this point in time. Karen, thank you very much for uh, for joining us. Uh, congratulations on all your success so far this season, and hopefully that does continue. Hopefully the Vixens bounce back against Adelaide next weekend and continue to motor on towards the finals. Thank you for having me. Welcome back. It is smack bang on 11 o'clock. This is Super Women Live. Before we hand it over to Scott Cooney for a global game day, we've still got one more a very, a very special guest on Super Women Live. Time now on Super Women Live to check in with the captain of the Melbourne Vixens, Bianca Chatfield. We uh, had her in the studio last week and she's been good enough to give us a little bit of her time. Bianca, thank you very much for joining us. No problems at all. Wish it was on a happier note. Well, I guess on that, we, we spoke last week about uh, a couple of losses in a row. Unfortunately, now we're, we're speaking about three. Is there now something of a pattern that you think that is emerging that is, is perhaps a, a reason why the form is the way it is at the moment? Well, I'm not sure if I can really put my finger on what the reason is, um, but it's definitely the pattern is emerging that we're trying to fight pretty hard to get ourselves out of. Um, just the the energy and the momentum out there on court that we had in the first six rounds is just not there at the moment. And it's probably the, the old saying that, you know, if we knew what it was, we would fix it straight away. So, yes, we are, you know, talking about it, trying to come up with, you know, anything and everything that we can and we try to make sure we put these three games behind us and move forward in more of a positive way. Looking at, I mean, there has been one exception to this, I think it was when the Swifts beat you a few weeks ago, but generally it's been starting reasonably sluggish and then fighting back, uh, spirit of the last quarter, getting within a couple, crowd sort of up and about, got over the line against the Magic, got over the line against Queensland, but just over the last couple of weeks, haven't been able to do so. Has there been anything pinpointed in regards to even starts to games? Is it something where perhaps due to the, even the versatility in your structure that sometimes it's hard maybe to get it exactly right from the word go? Yeah, although we probably look at our versatility as more of a positive. Mm. In previous years, we've had a set seven and haven't really been able to make any wholesale changes. Um, or it's refreshing this year where we can mix it around, and especially for the defence and we can put you know, the three of us in all different positions and and hopefully get over the line um, against our opposition. So, yeah, our starts are certainly a concern. We've, you know, tried changing our warm-up. We did a little bit of extra stuff um, before we were called out onto court today. And, um, yeah, I, sometimes I think you, when you do lose, though, you do mm. overanalyze things and it becomes, you know, too many opinions and too many voices and, Rather than, you know what, it's probably just as simple as it's just getting out there and playing and playing with that energy um, that we know um, we can. Is it also a case, perhaps, of the competition being so even that if a side is 5% off for, for whatever reason, that's all it takes? I mean, the Swifts lost their first three games, I'm pretty sure, and have lost certainly their first two and have got on a roll winning six in a row. And the Mystics have jumped to the top of the ladder and two weeks ago they got smashed by Queensland. Uh, you guys obviously belted the Thunderbirds, but they've been travelling along very nicely. Does it perhaps just give a demonstration that the competition is so tight that the slightest slip up and, and essentially anyone beats you? That's right. And this year it's pretty, I mean, not uh, exciting um, for the teams, but exciting for the crowds. And we've had record crowds in Melbourne. So I presume that the strength of the competition is growing um, Mm. and that's exciting for the game. But, you know, for us as a team, it is hard. There's no easy games. And we certainly have a tough um, road um, towards the finals and that we have to come up against Adelaide next week, which, you know, that, that game is, I think, going to be a massive decider for us. 
uh, it will certainly determine, I would imagine, our final position. Um, and then we still have to play Fever and then go over to New Zealand for a week and play Steel and Pulse, who are by no means going to be easy at all on their home territory over there. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be tough. But I think we, if we're going to be premiership contenders, hmm. we need the tough games now and we need to be able to know that we can get over them so that when we come to the finals and it's do or die that we know we have it in us to come through and win those games. Well, Adelaide is certainly a potential finals opponent. And do you look back now with confidence, obviously beating them by 14 goals last time you played them, we know that the, the Swifts are, are in red-hot form and have been a bit of a problem matchup for some sides, but at least as a group you can reflect back and say, look, last time we went to Adelaide and, and they held no fears for us and we won that game quite convincingly. That's something you might be able to call on from a confidence point of view this week. Definitely. Um, you can probably look at it in two ways. Like, firstly, would definitely be not for motivation, but mm. just for that watching it and that great feeling. I think that was the best game that we've played all year yeah. since Adelaide. Um, the energy out on the court, the the calmness. It was a really amazing um, feeling from everyone that was out there. Uh, and you know, we do need to replicate that. So, rather than focus on all the negatives, it's about the positives and let's have a look and and that feel um, good feeling I guess that we had when we were over there we just need to to harness that and to remember how good it was because it's there it's just a matter of just kind of igniting that fire and getting it going and just a couple more before we let you go I know last week we spoke about the the difficulties perhaps of adapting to to a lot of different positional changes and these sorts of things you mentioned the three girls that play in defense have have rotated around wing defense keeper goal defense and I could be wide of the mark with this, but I think watching you play most of the season, I think you've generally started in the, the running positions, generally goal defence or wing defence, starting at keeper. Today, obviously, a Swift Susan Prattley, a, an Australian player in the past and certainly been a, a, a teammate over the years. Was it sort of different going into that mentality from the start of a game as a keeper? Because, I mean, as I said, I could be wrong, but I think you've started at goal defence most of the time. Yeah, I have started out most of the time this year, but, I mean, goalkeeper is a position that I've, probably played my entire career at. It's only been the last few years that I've played yep. out. So for me, I was hoping that it would be um, kind of back to my comfort zone and back to where I know best how to play. And, um, yeah, unfortunately, you know, we got a few turnovers, but we didn't get enough down our end in that first half. And, um, yeah, I, I, you know, at this level and at my age and experience, I have to be able to adjust no matter where I'm playing. So, um, yeah, I don't. it's certainly not an excuse at all that... <laughs> You know, we changed it up like that because you know, I think all three of us should be able to play anywhere and mark our stamp on the game straight away and not have to work into the game. Uh, Maddie Brown looked a little bit sore at some point. How's she going at the moment? Yeah, she's good. I think I think both her and Chelsea Trigui yeah. worked so, so hard today. Um, they were just our link from attack to defence and I, I almost think we rely on them too much. You know, their bodies take a massive battering and they also, you know, they're fatigued because of how much they have to run and how much energy they have to exert. So, um, you know, I think that they've got every right to be tired because they do a lot of work out there. And I think all of us around them need to step up to help them out a little bit and take the pressure off them. Well, Bianca, we wish you well for Adelaide next week and then for the remainder of the season. Uh, Hopefully we can get things back on track, chalk up another victory, move back into the top two and and continue to uh, to roll on. Obviously, it's been nice and tight in the... In the three losses, so not a lot has to change for uh, for the uh, the wheels to get rolling again. No, you're exactly right. Not a lot has to change, um, but something does have to change. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work that out this week, and um, 